They're sandwiching me between them before I can even finish my protest. Are, are we gonna like, free some? <laughs> like, what's going on? Hey internet, it's Jessica and welcome back to your dry delight. So hopefully now we are at like the official ending and what I mean by that is like both roots have merged together and we can actually see the ending of this game. If not, well I hope we are there soon. <laughs> anyway, let's continue. We hit it out side by side, determined but hopeful, the partners you've always been. I have faith in Leslie, just like he has faith in me. We'll get the job done, together. Oh, this is weird! So we're actually going to this be easy together. I really thought like one of them was gonna go in and one is gonna like watch out for the other one, I don't know. Loud music rushes over me in a wave. The familiar sea of dancers, lights, and sparkling glasses. Phew, this place is quite a scene, isn't it? Leslie murmurs at my side as we walk along, glancing around the speak. It's a little less crowded today. They must have known that you were coming. Oh, low blow. As we weave our way to the bar, my attention is drawn to a group of familiar figures. Those sketchy guys from the other night, but it looks like there are more of them today. I nudge Leslie's side and jerk my chin in that direction. He follows my subtle gesture, eyes narrowing faintly. We exchange no words, but I can tell we're thinking the same thing. Those are Mayor's men. At the bar, Leslie orders us a couple of drinks, just to keep up appearances. We've got to find ways to ask about Earl, but we can't risk being too obvious about it. Jerk! When a certain voice calls out over the music, I freeze. If that's who I think it is, then... <gasps> well, this is terribly awkward. I was terribly disappointed last night, Jack. The expensive bottle of honey, Sil Silvovitz, I got for you was so my sole conversation partner. Sure enough, Mayor saunters up to us with a usual sly grin, leaning one arm against the bar. Oh? I see you brought a friend. Mayor turns his attention to Leslie, standing in for a few moments before offering a polite nod. Leslie does the same, sizing the other men up silently, but quickly breaks into a smile of his own. You must be Mayor! Jack was just singing up your praises, and you know, I can really see why. Hmm, singing my praises, was he? My gaze meets Mayor, and then he suggestively winks. Great, Leslie, thanks for encouraging him! And who might I have the pleasure of meeting tonight? Leslie's the name, how do you do? I'm actually surprised that he's not bullshitting with, like, his fake name or anything. Wait, he's giving Mayor his real name? Is he planning something? They reach around me and shake hands, each still wearing a confident smirk. How do you do? Would I be correct to assume you're a public servant like Jack here, Mr. Leslie? You could be very correct. We met through work, actually. I see, I see. Very interesting. There's something uncomfortable about this atmosphere. What exactly is going on? And you, Mayor, what do you do for work? Curious, you should mention that. I consider myself a public servant as well. Oh my, what a coincidence! I had a feeling, really. The second I saw you, I thought to myself, here's a charitable man, alright? I knew it! You may not believe this, but I have the same reaction. That noble air you have, why, well, it speaks volumes about you. You strike me as a dutiful sort of fellow, and I respect that. No, something is definitely very wrong. There's no way either of them is being serious. In fact, it almost sounds like... Actually, Mayor, I have a question for you. Pausing for a moment, Leslie glances up at the clock. It's only a quick look, but it seems deliberate. Of course, please go on. You didn't happen to see a man around here the other night. Dark, shaggy hair, pointy nose, brown eyes, walks with a slight limp. Mayor brushes a hand through his hair, eyes slightly drifting to one side. Hmm, it's very possible that description sounds quite familiar. But you know, Mr. Leslie, information often comes with a price. At, at that instant, what's happening now? Oh, it's the cops! So this is where it breaks off from both routes. Okay, okay, okay. Why'd you capture him then? To use him as bait, naturally. Bait? Mayor nods, giving a slight, apologetic smile, although he looks too pleased with himself about it. You see, after a friend Jack here showed up the other night, I was struck with an idea. I knew he was a detective before he so much walked through the door. Your informant's working for me, so I decided to have a chat with him. You mean, back there, that was... Don't get me wrong, Richard, I was enjoying every second of it. But I've been looking for a way to work out an arrangement in the law in Cleveland for some time. You're a hard-headed sort here, let me tell you that. He exhales a breath between his teeth, gently shaking his head. Richer, however, I could tell that he was made of something different, not so hell-bent on enforcing the Volstead Act, yet not just the type to be brought either. 
I was intrigued. So I thought I'd try to work out a deal until he cruelly decided to leave me hanging, that is, giving him my name. Giving him my name, that was what you call backup plan. I know he put it together soon enough and came back here when he did. Capturing your agent now, that was a little more spontaneous. A little foolish too, more than likely, but that's how I operate. His lips curl into a devil, devil may care smirk and he shrugs nonchalantly. You really had this all planned from the beginning? Wasn't it a huge risk? Of course, but a calculated one. Mayor casually waves at one hand, as if brushing away my disbelief. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. I like to be I like to make big gambles in most of them time and most of the time they pay off. But I've done my research on your backgrounds, your past jobs. I knew you wouldn't simply raid my venue without showing a little of your hand first. So you could say the chips landed where I thought they might. It's suddenly all too clear how this man became a mafia leader. He's got the right mixture of planning, risk taking, and charm, all wrapped into one dangerous package. Phew! I feel like a man who just got cheated out of his fortune at cards. Leslie rubs his cheek with a hand, blinkly, blinking rapidly, as if he's just trying to understand everything we just heard. Can't blame him. I knew Mayor was sharp, but I had no idea he planned everything out of time ahead. I'll admit, despite the fact that your methods are incredibly questionable, you've made me curious. You mentioned a deal, didn't you? What kind of deal are we talking about here? Leslie? To my surprise, Leslie cautiously questions Mayor, one eyebrow slightly raised. I was expecting him to be furious, but instead he sounds more impressed than anything. Oh, I was hoping you asked that. Why don't we discuss matters privately on neutral ground? Okay, so this is the meeting we're supposed to set up in the hotel. Alright, the meeting is starting now. I hope this isn't the part where we get shot by a sniper through the window. The restaurant across the street wouldn't let my man inside, unfortunately. Ah, what a relief. The three of us stroll into the hotel room, still followed by the tense air from earlier. Mayor and Leslie have been constantly bantering on the way here, but I can't tell if it's a genuine side or the playful kind. Well, no point in wasting time, eh? Let's hear your proposal, Eastman. We're listening. Of course, I'm sure both of you are exceptionally busy men. We shift into a fair close circle, close enough that we don't risk voices carrying it too far. Leslie stands nearer to my side than Mayor, almost protective in his stance. I don't know what he thinks he can do. If worse came to worse, I guess I could pick him up and use him as a battering ram. I assume you're already aware of my influence in the city, and the control I have over the large amount of business. But I'm not without com- but I'm not without competition. There are a number of smaller, persistent groups that, while less organized, are, are still significant. And the, as a result of my extensive network, I'm familiar with the movements of those various outfits and their leaders across Cleveland. In English, that means you know what the other gangs are up to, right? Precisely, Richard. He winks at me, almost imperceptibly, like I've been led on in some sort of joke. I propose that I offer a steady stream of information to you, more than enough to fill reports for the FBI, surely, at least for the time being. You'll discover a new warehouse to raid every other week, one that coincidentally belongs to a different organization than mine. Funny thing how coincidences like that happen. Leslie quips dryly, glancing between Mayor and me. His gaze stays locked with mine for several seconds, one eyebrow raised in a what do you make of this so far kind of way. So, what would you be wanting in exchange? A love of discretion on your part that will allow me to carry on with my business. Mayor murmurs in terms rather naturally, blowing on his nails and polishing them nonchalantly with his collar. I'll see that if my men keep their noses clean. After all, I'm interested in providing alcohol to customers, not filling the streets with bodies of enemies. Very poetic. There is certainly more where that came from. He doesn't even make eye contact in innocently gazing in one direction, but his tone is teasing enough to get the message across. Leslie narrows his eyes a little at Mayor. Is he trying to read him or he's already made up his mind? <laughs> Believe me, I don't doubt that a part of this conflict with your senses of justice and detectives. After speaking with Richard, I wouldn't expect anything less. But you're both logical, practical men. Try to view the situation through a more objective lens. There's a short pause, but an important one. My mind flashes back to my conversation with Leslie, our doubts and guilt over what we're doing. If you took me to jail right now and by some miracle managed to convict me, someone else will only step and take my place. This war on liquor will never end. It should never have existed to begin with. 
all it is succeeded in doing was creating different short different short of industry a more dangerous one and yeah and i agree with that it's like their conversation like what richard was saying in in their hotel when they were contemplating of like is this the right thing to do is the prohibition the right thing to do obviously we know it's not but um it's it's actually nice to see like character conflict in a short visual novel story so it's pretty cool to see that with that in mind his dark green eyes flicked to me to leslie and back to me why not compromise and make your employer happy and make your employers happy in exchange for making the American people happy? Once he finishes speaking, a longer silence falls over the room. Leslie rubs at his shoulder with one hand, staring at the floor with a deep brooding expression, and I follow my own complicated thoughts. I've always wondered I always wanted to control crime, uphold the law, and fall asleep with a clean conscience every night. But when it comes to prohibition, that same question keeps resurfacing in my head. Is enforcing this law really the right thing to do? Should we follow the federal orders like mindless slaves, or should we make our own judgment in the cases like this? I steal a glance up at Mayor. He returns my gaze with a gentle, calm smile, eyes gl glimmering curiously. Richard? Leslie turns to face me, his features carefully composed in an unusual neutral mask. Any thoughts? De deciding to let my apparently crippling honesty speak for me, I take a deep breath. I don't think prohibition is meant to last. I take pride in my job, but I get nothing out of enforcing the Volstead's middle finger to America, snatching away who's just to suit the Fed's fancy. That doesn't sit right with me. And as for Mayor, I think he's right, boss. With him or without him, the liquor business will keep going, and I'd rather some... And I'd rather someone like Mayor run it than some crew than some crew out for blood as much as profit. I mean, as fucked up as it is, I do think it's fair. Because, like, yeah, Mayor is a very smart man. And obviously he is if he's willing to meet with two cops, you know, to be like, hey, let's just do this peacefully. Even though they're not supposed to talk to each other, let's do this peacefully rather than having people get killed over it. He's waving on the brink of deciding something, but I can't tell which way he's leaning. Whatever decision you make, Moss, I'll stand behind it. You can count on that. I know, Richard. That's why you're my partner. After a lengthy pause, Leslie finally breaks into a faint smile, turning his gaze from me to Mayor. Listen, I can't promise the deal will forever hold, Mayor. There's always a risk that someone will find out or will get a move on to a different case. I'm well aware of that, so a few good things last forever. But that's more of a reason to enjoy them while they last, isn't it? <laughs> I'll drink to that, all right. He suddenly takes a deep breath, sharp breath, eyes flashing. Damn, it sure feels good to split in Volstead's eyes, that son of a bitch. <laughs> and gives Mayor's hand firmly, shaking you with pure determination. In fact, he seems so convinc convicted that I have to wonder how hard the decision was really was for him. He wasn't just pausing for dramatic effect there back then, was he? I think he was, because we know Leslie, he's pretty dramatic, so he's probably doing all that for drama. You know, my sister got married last week. The reception was completely dry, not a drop of booze in sight. Have you ever had to sit through 15 wedding speeches completely sober? I've never prayed so hard for a rapture in my life. <laughs> oh my god, Leslie's so dramatic. As his hand is pumped up and down in enthusiastic Leslie, Mayor breaks into a delightful laughter. Maybe the first time I've ever heard him be so loud. Whether it's from amusement or relief, though, I can't really tell. Well, this is a cause for celebration, gentlemen, would you agree? Mayor steps over to the door, lightly knocking four times. After a few seconds, it opens slightly, with someone discreetly hands him a bottle of several wine glasses. Is that- You had them bring it here? Wasn't that a bit presumptuous? I only had to make bets I'm confident in. Ah, I had a feeling you we were going to get along just fine. They exchange playful glances, and then their eyes slide over at me. Why do I suddenly feel like a rabbit spotted by a pair of lions? Hey, hey, what are you? Before I knew it, the two men had taken my arms, pulling me over to the foot of the bed. Whoa, what's happening? They're like operating in some new unspoken pack. They're sandwiching me between them before I can even finish my protest. Are, are we gonna like, free some? <laughs> like, what's going on? Shall we toast to the success of their new partnership? Don't mind if I do. You're a true gentleman after all, Mayor. Leslie holds out his glass and Mayor casually reaches over to pour. <laughs> this, aww, it's kind of a cute, like, send-off, actually. And of course, we shouldn't forget the wonderful little detective who brought us together, shouldn't we? Well, it's really nothing, I- 
I humbly nominate him as ambassador, the key component to making sure a relationship runs smoothly. That's actually not a bad idea. He can't tell a lie to save his life. It's so it's better for him than undercover work, that's for sure. What the hell? I didn't agree to this. Did I? Hello? <laughs> agree, Richard, please. You're merely continuing the role you already have. You heard the man, Richard. Ambassador's a great sounding title, too. I'm jealous. <laughs> Very funny, you fellas. You're a real riot. As I grumble to myself, watching the deep ruby liquid flow from Leslie's glass, my mind begins to picture how many other deals like this will take place while Prohibition goes on. It's already changed our country forever, changed us as Americans forever, though I doubt we'll understand the full scale of it for many, many years. But when I think about it, all the detectives and officers who one day reach the same conclusion as us, I have to wonder, just how much longer will this dry America last? I think it's perfectly fair to keep him four days a week with me. Four days, you greedy bastard, trying to monopolize him, eh? I tune back to the good-natured argument, one that seems to be about... Hmm, what if we share him for one day? Surely a reasonable, surely a reasonable man like yourself would agree to that, Leslie. Sharing him for a day, eh? You know, I think I can, you know, I think that can be arranged. What the hell kind of conversation are you? <laughs> Never mind. We're just gonna share both the boys, I guess! I guess that's fine with Richard, he seems happy in this picture. Your dry delights! This was a good visual novel, even though it was short. I did enjoy it, because it takes on, like, you know, the 1920s theme. That's not really explored nowadays. It used to be very popular, like, this theme used to be so popular back then. And uh, now it's not really popular, but anyway, regardless of that, um, I'm just gonna take into account this is short, so yes, I do wish there was a longer story to like highlight each character, like their backgrounds or whatever. But I do appreciate the fact that you know, Argent Games did, did give them like a backstory, like even if it's a mini one, they still had a backstory. And um, I do appreciate the p character dynamics between um, Richard and Leslie. That's for me though, I prefer their relationship over Richard and Mayer. That's just me. But um, this game was really cute, it was fun to play, I really liked it. Being a free game is still good, you know what I mean? There's a lot of free games out there that are not like enjoyable. This one was very enjoyable. So that comes to the end of my Let's Play for Your Dry Delight. I want to thank you all for watching and if you guys enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like. Let me know in the comments what you think about the ending and who was your favorite, Leslie or Mayer? Also want to give a shout out to Argent Games. If you guys want to check out the game yourself and play for yourself, I'll leave a link in the description and yeah. Yeah. Remember to subscribe and hit the bell button so you know when I upload the next visual novel let's play. I will see you all in the next one. Bye! Oh no. Damn it. Come on. Oh, come on. Why is it dark? Oh shit! Oh. <laughs> Fuck you. It'll make more comfortable since I'm. <laughs> oh god. Since I'm bigger. Sorry, I'm thinking of something else. Bigger? Uh, height. My stature. I was.